Husky fans, Maction is back. Welcome into NIU Weekly. I am Andy Garcia alongside the Associate Vice President and Director of Athletics at NIU, Sean T. Frazier. Sean, great to be with you again. And some great news came out Friday. Maction is back. We're going to see NIU football this fall starting November 4th. And uh, I can't wait. And I know it's been a long over overdue thing that you had to go through. And all the protocols and, and what the presidents have had to go through with the MAC and the ADs like you. Uh, just talk a little bit about what the last couple of months have been for you, but finally get some news that uh, we're going to see NIU football in early November. Yeah, Andy, uh, thanks a lot. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's, been, it's been an interesting ride thus far, right? Uh, uh, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, the, the pause really helped us out. You know, when we, you know, it's been over a month and a half since we, um, we postponed. Uh, and, and really gave us a chance to reflect on a lot of different things. Obviously, sa- uh, uh, health and safety is job one. We, we get that. I know that's been uh, a constant. But the other part of that is that taking a look at the landscape of college athletics and, and taking a look at COVID, quite frankly, has it changed. Nothing has uh, uh, hugely changed around the virus. It's still, again, it's here. Uh, people are dying from it. People are uh, contracting it. You, you know, the, these are the sobering facts, the realities of what's going on. Um, but we had a chance to take a look at the landscape about some of those leagues that, that went out uh, strong uh, uh, with it. And uh, uh, I hate to say it this way, but we've learned uh, uh, from that. You know, I, I mentioned that in the press conference, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, so we had a chance over a month and a half to take a look at things. And as we saw, people were pausing. Uh, they were canceling. Um, they were stopping play. People were catching it, you know. So again, um, um, that along with our uh, medical protocol uh, development, with our medical advisory group from the MAC, uh, uh, kudos, you know, to uh, our own uh, Brian Babka, uh, Dr. Babka, along with all of the medical professionals uh, of the MAC. You know, they made a statement uh, and going through this process and making sure that we can safeguard our students and our faculty and staff. So. You know, that's the real big crux of this. You know, it, it made a believer of myself. I made a believer of a number of folks that were on the fence about moving forward. And I'm just, I'm just glad that we got that done uh, and then we can move on. And then be, be uh, uh, cautious about things as we kind of go through the process. But we got to a point where uh, we, we can feel comfortable about moving forward. So that's kind of where we are right now. You mentioned in your press conference last week about the advancements that you've seen. What are some of those advancements from rapid testing to uh, just what you've been able to do and what you've dealt with? And I know Northwestern Medicine, you've been working hand in hand with them. Yeah, you know, to have that, you mentioned it, you know, to have that group, Northwestern Medicine, and kudos to Jay Anderson and and, uh, Dr. Babka and and all of the professionals at Northwestern Medicine, kudos, right? You know, they're in it. To have that access, that network, that ability to uh, to have that huge amount of cachet at our fingertips was big, right? Because they're also servicing another uh, unnamed uh, a Big Ten institution at the same time they're serving us. But, uh, you know, having that and then having the ability uh, to have the rapid, rapid testing and then the follow-up and the ag- um, ag- um, antigen, uh, I can't even say it right, a- antigen uh, uh, rapid testing system uh, was huge. Uh, and then obviously the cardiac evaluation from that and all the protocols, the protocol itself is very comprehensive and it goes through a number of different aspects and we have that uh, transparent and available for everybody as well. But it's going to take all of that to safeguard our young people, our staff and people that are close to the program. So that was a, a game changer for me, uh, as well as talking to uh, a lot of my colleagues within uh, the country, the 10 included, uh, just saying, okay, if you could do it over, if you could do something to safeguard further, what did you need? And then again, that rapid, te- you know, that rapid testing, that, that quick knowledge base behind that. So all those pieces were, were key in our return. Again, we're going to talk to head coach Thomas Hammock. We had a coach on each week. We're going to go back to coach Hammock because huge news. I'm going to talk about how the team uh, found out about how they're going to play and, and how they've been since then. And we're going to have Coach Hammock on in just a second. But one more for you, Sean. And uh, this now, you know, NIU and, and football is not out of the woods. This is just stage one, right? You guys are going to play. But as I've seen from my travels around college football so far, going to Wake Forest, and I was at Oklahoma last week because they took on Kansas State, 
it's up to the minute. And players and coaches and staff have to be aware and have to take care of themselves because as we've seen this year, Sean, we've seen games postponed because of testing, and now it's the responsibility of keeping everyone safe and, and making sure the responsibility. If you want to play, stay safe. Yeah, no, I think you said it really well. You know, I, I think that when we address the team and as we further educate what the protocols mean uh, for our players, our staff, everyone that's close to the program, um, yeah, we have some significant hurdles and challenges moving forward. And there might be postponement. There might be some setbacks. Uh, but again, it's about, about what we can control. Uh, I feel good about our players and our staff and, and, and folks around the program. Um, it's going to be down to the fact of making sure that we're doing everything right from a socially distancing, putting our masks, making sure that we're following it. So, yeah, we have a long ro uh, road to go. Uh, but you know what? Uh, I feel good that we have some options. We have some opportunities uh, and some choices. And we'll find out more about if there's going to be fans in the stands. I know Husky fans are going to be excited. Can we be in games? Can we be at them and, and, and schedule? And the you know, schedule is looking like it's going to be next week. I'm sure some of those questions will be answered soon, right, Sean, about the fans? No, they will. They will. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, we're, we're waiting through it. Obviously, uh, taking a look at fans are, are really a decision from our, our county here in the Cal. Uh, and then, obviously, the state of Illinois, uh, you know, each uh, state uh, that the MAC occupies uh, will have uh, uh, someone who's going to make those final decisions from the health department. So uh, we're no different. So as we kind of take a look at that and those decisions become a little more clear, uh, we'll make sure we get that out uh, to the fan base and uh, make sure that, that we support wherever we go. Husky football's back. Let's bring them back in. Then are you weekly? Huskies head football coach, Thomas Hammock. And coach, you're going to be seeing this face more. Match is back, <laughs> baby. November 4th, uh, football's back. And I know you're excited. The coaches are excited. The players have to be excited. The fans are excited. How did your uh, players and your coaches, how did they uh, react when they found out that the news that uh, Maction is coming back? Well, uh, you know, everybody wants to play. I think um, that's why you – uh, most of us have been involved with sports since we was a kid. Uh, to, to have an opportunity to compete, uh, I think they're excited. Um, you know, they're ready to go. We've had a great summer as far as the things that we were doing uh, with the possibility of not playing. So uh, to throw in that caveat that they're going to have an opportunity to play a six-game season uh, with, a, with an opportunity for a MAC championship is something that they, they're excited about and, and, and ready to get rolling. Sean, I'll lead you into what coach, your question with coach, but Sean, is a six game season, is that kind of perfect what you guys were looking at? Yeah, that, you know, what we're looking at all, all scenarios, it, it was, you know, six, eight, you know, full, <laughs> whatever we can get into, right? Uh, but six, uh, we decided on because of uh, the amount of time and preparation prior, you know, to, to get to a point of a first game, we, you know, we, we've been uh, shut down to some degree. Uh, uh, obviously, the coaches have been doing their deal. The student athletes have been trying to keep themselves in shape. But we need to have, from a medical as well as from an overall uh, uh, process of, of ramping up, we needed a certain amount of time uh, to get there and uh, not to rush it, right? So uh, six game uh, made sense. Uh, November 4th made sense. And then obviously, as we kind of go through it, uh, uh, it keeps everybody focused and locked in. Uh, Thomas, I talked to Sean about the testing where, you know, we're not out of the woods. This is now just the first step. We now have a season. You got six games, but as I mentioned, you know, being around college football for the last couple of weeks, now you got to be prepared and responsible. If I want to play, I've got to take care of myself, be careful what I'm at. How have your players reacted to that, knowing, hey, this is now week by week. If I want to play, I've got to be responsible and, and take care of myself. Well, I think uh, the most important thing is the testing gives you a, to, the ability uh, to stop the spread. I think that's the the big thing as, as I look at it. So we'll be able to know uh, in the morning before we hit the practice field or to say these guys are going to be good for today. And then I, obviously I think the games and being able to play in uh, games are going to keep them locked in and motivated as opposed to, hey, I'm just working out or lifting and, and playing in the spring. So I think, um, you know, obviously I think the, the protocol that they, they put in place is one that uh, is a higher standard than other group of five uh um, conferences, which I think is great. And uh, one that we have to take seriously, uh, you know, what you realize is, you know, even if you're doing all the right things, you still can, um, you know, uh, catch it, you know, from somebody else. So number one, you have to take care of yourself uh, and you have to be a great teammate and take care of your teammates as well. 
Sean? Yeah, Coach, you know, you're absolutely right. You know, I, I, again, we're, we're leading by example again. You know, um, you know, from your perspective and taking a look at, your, you know, your student athletes and, and your, co your coaching staff, um, give us a little back room of viewpoint on this. Are we, are we going to be ready? Are we going to ready to fire this thing up? What's the deal? Yeah, no, we, I mean, we're certainly going to be ready. I, I think uh, we have an excellent schedule in place. Um, you know, the, the, the thing that's a little different is most training camps happen without school starting. So now you're looking at uh, doing a training camp, uh, doing the school and having a 20 hour rule. So uh, we've done some good things creatively schedule wise uh, to make sure we can maximize the time, uh, maybe take, you know, a little less meeting time uh, and, and get more field work, uh, knowing that we haven't had a spring ball, knowing that we haven't uh, had a full, um, you know, summer training camp. So uh, we got a good schedule in place. I think our players are like it. I think it keeps them fresh um, and as well as giving them time off to, to recover. I think that's the big thing, right? If you look at all, all, all these college football games in the NFL, you see a lot of injuries. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to make sure we can get them physically uh, ready to go and giving them enough time uh, where we can, you know, be peaking at the right time uh, for November 4th. This is NIU Weekly. I'm Andy Garcia alongside Sean T. Frazier and the Huskies head football coach, Thomas Hammock. Maction is back starting on November 4th. And coach, one of the things you talked about in the press conference after the announcement was made about this, this juice committee, right? You, you're not gonna have a lot of fans. We don't know if fans are gonna be in the stands, but there's this juice committee. I wanna be the head of the juice community, uh, committee. I, I want this job. How did this come about and how important is this committee to you know, getting yourselves prepared? And again, you're gonna make your own environment, right? We're not gonna see a lot of fans, uh, but I want a part of this. I want some of this action. Well, certainly we can, we can talk off air. And, and get you on the committee. Uh, so we got about uh, four coaches, including myself, and about five or six players. And I, I think what, what I noticed is when you watch college football, you see all these different things. You see the turnover chain at Miami, right? You see the hoop at Pitt. Uh, and, you know, uh, I'm not the oldest guy, but Coach Novak wasn't having no juice committee. So, uh, you know, we just went out there and played and, and, and got ourselves ready to play. But what you realize is uh, in this day and age, uh, with social media and young people, uh, you want to keep it fun and exciting. And so we got some great ideas. Uh, we're not going to give, you know, you guys too much, but you will see them. Uh, our players will know about it. I want to install it to our players first, and we got to practice it. If you're going to do something in the game, you got to practice it. No different than offense, defense, and special teams. So uh, we got some great ideas. Our players really, really came up with some good stuff, and uh, we look forward to displaying it uh, November 4th. Hey, hey Coach, you know, you talking about juice? I want to get up in there. Come on now, let, let me have a little bit of some of that. Hey. It's, it's a selective, it's a selective thing, you know, and uh, it's exclusive. Uh, but I, I know we, we I know. talk about BYOJ. Bring your own juice. I love it. <laughs> you know, talked about a little some of the adjustments. You know, getting ready for a season in, in, during school, uh, a six-game schedule. How? Quick, how fast out of the gate does your team have to be coming in and, and playing right away? But what are the biggest adjustments you're going to have to do and your staff to have this team be ready on November 4th? Well, the biggest adjustment, number one, is, you know, with classes being online, uh, the schedules are much different than, than normal. We would normally have a, a block of time that we can meet, but sometimes it's uh, classes. Uh, so one big adjustment for us is, is uh, we're going to practice in the mornings, and I, I'm excited about that. Uh, where you can have a chance to wake up, get your physical work done, and then get your meetings uh, later on, get your walkthroughs, whatever the case may be, uh, later in that day, where you can know by, by you know, by 8 o'clock in the morning, I'm done with practice. And I think uh, a lot of people that's went to the morning uh, schedule uh, has, has really liked it and embraced it. And uh, I'm excited about it, where we can have a chance to get our work done early in the week and then uh, later in the week, uh, allow them to sleep in a little bit and get ready for the game. So uh, we certainly excited. Uh, we working. Uh, obviously, we have to be able to adjust and adapt. Um, and 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 so this morning uh, schedule is something that I'm really excited about. Uh, Sean, uh, coach, talk to me about these seniors. You know, you know, just knowing them as much as I I've been I, I, I've been here at NIU. Uh, talk to me about your senior leadership and how they reacted to the news that they're about to. Uh, you know, lock and load, put these pads on again. 
Well, you know, you look at the senior leadership and, and what a great opportunity. Um, number one, they don't have the pressure of, hey, this is, you know, uh, necessarily my last year. You have, you have an option, right? This is an option year. So if you go out there and play the type of football that you expect to play, uh, then obviously we'll, we'll give you a big hug on senior day. If you, if you feel like you got some uh, things that's left undone, uh, then you can have that opportunity to potentially come back. So to me, I think their mindset is great. They want to go out there and maximize the six games uh, and, and go out there and put a ring on their finger, uh, just like, uh, you know, teams in the past. And I said, you know, as you look at it, we have to be fast out the gate. Uh, your leadership is necessary. Um, we got some young players that need to get caught up to speed extremely quickly. Um, but every day is an opportunity to get better. You've got to take full advantage of the day. And uh, these guys have been texting me. They've been calling me. Uh, they're ready to go. They said, Coach, you know, whatever you need from us, we're going to be ready to do. And I, I'm excited about the group. That's great. Well, that's what's nice now. There's not a pie in the sky. You know November 4th. You know starting early October, we're practicing for six games. You know, we're getting ready for a season. That's a good feeling, Coach. What excites you, mo what excites you most about this team? There's a lot of youth. You've talked about the seniors. There's an opportunity now, only six games, chance for a crown. Well, I think, you know, what really excites me, I think, you know, uh, a lot of people are going to overlook us. And so we have an opportunity to go out there and shock people. Uh, I think, you know, we have a chip on our shoulder. That's something that's ingrained uh, for anybody that plays at this university. Um, but at the same time, I know we have a level of, of size and physicality that's really going to show up. And when you start talking about uh, November and December type weather, uh, you know, we have to build a team that's going to be physically uh, ready to go. Uh, and that starts with obviously running the football, stopping the run, and then being physical at the line of scrimmage. And I think uh, our size is going to surprise some people. And uh, we got to make sure that we can make the type of plays we need to make um, to get a lead, uh, keep the lead, extend the lead, and then let the elements take, take you know, do their part. Well, while I have all three of you here, congratulations. And, and thanks for your leadership, too, the part of the MAC Working Group coach. And, Sean, what you guys have done, we've wanted this for a long time, but I think as a fan and with other fans, we want it to be safe. And I think we're in a position, guys, that starting November 4th, we can do that. We can be in a spot. We can have some games, but also be as safe as we can. Yeah, great. I mean, I think the MAC did a great job. Uh, I think the leadership from the MAC, NIU, uh, Coach Frazier has been outstanding from the beginning. I think they, they stood on what they believed in and made sure that everything was in place and, and, and it was right uh, for our student athletes. And I think that's the most important thing when you're dealing with college athletics. Appreciate the time, Coach, and uh, looking for it. We're going to talk more. Maction's here, going to get ready for it. And uh, great having you on, and I'm sure we'll talk soon. No, no question. I'm looking for a carpool karaoke. Oh, <laughs> winter style. Oh, winter style. <laughs> I'm ready for it, Coach. We'll see you soon. Thanks for the time. Uh, NIU Weekly. Sean, man, I'm pumped. I'm excited. You can tell Thomas has just been waiting, right? Waiting for the right time for you. It was going to be spring. It was going to be spring. But with the news now, you know he's going to have his team ready. And it seems like they're, they've had that mental state now of, okay, we don't know when. No, we know now. And it seems like hopefully the team will be ready uh, early November. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're young. Um, yeah. But you know what? You know, those who try to count us out, Good luck. You know, at the end of the day, our tradition, our history, um, our passion, uh, we will be ready November 4th. There's no question about that. Uh, I, I'm excited that, you know, our council presidents, our commissioner, um, quite frankly, our, 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 our whole uh, medical staff, you know, so many people to thank to get to this particular point. We're not out of the woods yet, but, you know, it's great to know that we've done some major things to safeguard our young people and, uh, uh, kudos. Kudos to all involved, and uh, we'll be ready. There's no question about that. Well, we can't wait for football starting in November, but we also have an important event beginning in October, Sean, and that's the Huskies Invest, uh, the annual Husky Athletic Fund effort to support NIU student-athletes. And I understand this year's Huskies Invest will be a little bit different. Uh, in years past, it's been concentrated around a week of giving, uh, but you align the week of giving, giving a little later in the month uh, but as we know, the need right now is great as COVID has impacted uh, uh, so many of the NIU athletics uh, traditional revenue streams. So, um, you know, why is Huskies Invest so important now 
and boy, we really need the donations to flow in. It's just been a crazy year, as we know, but uh, this Huskies Invest is going to be different, but probably is not any more important than any year that we have. No, there's no question about it. You know, we're talking about COVID relief. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about maintaining uh, the level of excellence that, that we've achieved. You know, we, we, we've consistently uh, competed for, for championships. We've won a number of championships uh, in our league. And you know what, to continue to do that and step up um, the support from our Husky Athletic Fund, our donors, our supporters, uh, is big, it's huge. Um, uh, we do not get to where we are uh, alone. And uh, we totally understand that. And Husky Invest is that week long uh, uh, announcement, that historical uh, recognition um, that uh, you know, our, our stories are being told by our student athletes. Um, the impact that is made is so big. It's so huge. So again, this year, even more so because we've been kind of shut down on so many fronts uh, with some of the things that we normally do. So again, that's a big piece for us. Uh, we're looking for that same level of support plus more, <laughs> if I could say it that way. Uh, but again, the, I'm so appreciative of the support that we have already received and that, that we will receive during during that week. So again, thank you so much before you even start the process. But yeah, we need you. We need you now. Again, Huskies Invest coming up. And if you want to donate and support NIU at the Athletics, you can do that today. Go to huskyathleticfund.com. Uh, you'll see everything you need. All the details are there. Uh, you can also call 815-753-1923. 815-753-1923 and speak to a staff member. And also don't forget, there's still time to get into the Huskies and Ben's virtual golf outing, get your foursome together, play in a scramble format, uh, or just post an individual round score between now and October 10th. You can win prizes. A lot of good NIU prizes out there. Be a part of this virtual golf outing. You can find the link to sign up uh, to that on NIUHuskies.com. Imagine you can contribute to Huskies and Best uh, simply by signing up and playing a round of golf. Trust me, as Coach and, and Sean know, it's that important. Uh, to get that out and uh, sounds like a great way to support student athletes sean one more reminder subscribe today to this youtube channel uh, niu athletics uh, you'll get new videos up uh, you'll have new things every monday the monday minute will be there as well so check it out go to niu athletics on the youtube page right here you'll see new episodes of niu weekly as long as uh, as well as other highlights and other features sean the great news maction is back it's taken a lot of work but i know you're excited and uh Man, hopefully we get all six games in and uh, able to crown a MAC champion in December. Yes, no question. You know, the race is on. You know, every game uh, means something, uh, even more so now during this kind of COVID uh, 2020 uh, that we have right now. So, yeah, it, it will be uh, live, all the way live, MAC in the month of November going to December. So I'm so excited we're back. No question. It's going to be good. That's awesome. Yeah, great to have Husky head football coach Thomas Amico with us this week. Sean, we'll come back next week and I weekly have another head coach and talk more Husky athletics. Had fun, and I'll see you next week. Thanks a lot, Andy. I appreciate it. Stay safe now. For Thomas Hammock and Sean T. Frazier, I'm Andy Garcia saying thank you for watching NIU Weekly. We'll see you again soon. Go Huskies.